transportation transportation in human beings refer to activity 5.7 we have seen in previous sections that blood transports food oxygen and waste materials in our bodies in class 9th we learned that about blood being a fluid connective tissue blood consists of a fluid medium called a plasma in which the cells are suspended plasma transports food carbon dioxide and nitrogenous wastes in dissolved form oxygen is carried by the red blood corpuscles many other substances like salts are also transported by the blood we thus need a pumping organ to push the blood around the body a network of tubes to reach all the tissues and a system in place to ensure that this network can be repaired if damaged our pump the heart the heart is a muscular organ which is as big as our fist figure 5.10 shows the schematic sectional view of human heart human heart has four chambers the upper two chambers are called atria there is right atrium and left atrium similarly you can see the lower two bigger chambers are called ventricles right ventricle and left ventricle remember that the right side of heart contains deoxygenated blood that means oxygen poor blood and the left side of heart left atrium and left ventricle contains oxygenated blood coming back to the text because both oxygen and carbon dioxide have to be transported by the blood the heart has different chambers to prevent the oxygen rich blood from mixing with the blood containing carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide rich blood has to reach the lungs for the carbon dioxide to be removed and the oxygenated blood from the lungs has to be brought back to the heart this oxygen rich blood is then pumped to the rest of the body we can follow this process step by step referring to figure 5.11 let's go to the figure 5.11 Figure 5.11 shows schematic representation of transport and exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. It shows a vein on the right side of heart and right side of this diagram called the vena cava that brings blood back to the heart into the right atrium. blood goes to right ventricle from the right atrium right ventricle then pumps the blood to the lungs by pulmonary artery here at lungs the blood takes oxygen and the carbon dioxide is removed then blood is brought back to the left side of our heart by the pulmonary vein the pulmonary vein brings the blood to the left atrium left atrium pushes the blood into the left ventricle and left ventricle pumps the blood into aorta 
that supplies the oxygenated blood to different organs of our body. Back to the text. So, oxygen-rich blood from the lungs comes to the thin-walled upper chamber of the heart on the left, the left atrium. The left atrium relaxes when it's collecting this blood. It then contracts while the next chamber, the left ventricle, relaxes so that the blood is transported or transferred to it. When the muscular left ventricle contracts in its turn, the blood is pumped out to the body. Similarly, deoxygenated blood comes from the body to the upper chamber on the right, the right atrium, as it relaxes. As the right atrium contracts, the corresponding lower chamber, the right ventricle dilates. This transfers blood to the right ventricle, which in turn pumps it to the lungs for oxygenation. Since ventricles have to pump, since ventricles have to pump blood into various organs, they have thicker muscular walls than the atria do. Valves ensure that blood does not flow backwards when the atria and ventricles contract. Oxygen enters the blood in the lungs. The separation of the right side and the left side of the heart is useful to keep oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from mixing. Such separation allows a highly efficient supply of oxygen to the body. This is useful in animals that have high energy needs such as birds and mammals which constantly use energy to maintain their body temperature. In animals that do not use energy for this purpose, the body temperature depends on the temperature in the environment. Such animals like amphibians or many reptiles have free chambered hearts and tolerate some mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood streams. Fishes, on the other hand, have only two chambers in their hearts and the blood is pumped to the gills, is oxygenated there and passes directly to the rest of the body. Thus, blood goes only once through the heart in the fish during one cycle of passage through the body. On the other hand, it goes through the heart twice during each cycle in other vertebrates. This is known as double circulation. The tubes, blood vessels, arteries are the vessels which carry blood away from the heart to various organs of the body. Since the blood emerges from the heart under high pressure, the arteries have thick elastic walls. Veins collect the blood from different organs and bring it back to the heart. They do not need thick walls because the blood is no longer under pressure. Instead, they have valves that ensure that the blood flows only in one direction. On reaching an organ or tissue, the arteries 
the artery divides into smaller and smaller vessels to bring the blood in contact with all the individual cells. The smallest vessels have walls which are one cell thick and are called capillaries. Exchange of material between the blood and surrounding cells takes place across this thin wall of capillaries. The capillaries then join together to form veins that convey the blood away from the organ or tissue. Maintenance by platelets. What happens if this system of tubes develops a leak? Think about situations when we are injured and start bleeding. Naturally, the loss of blood from the system has to be minimized. In addition, leakage would lead to a loss of pressure which would reduce the efficiency of the pumping system. To avoid this, the blood has platelet cells which circulate around the body and plug these leaks by helping to clot the blood at these points of injury. Lymph There is another type of fluid also involved in transportation. This is called the lymph or tissue fluid. Through the pores, present in the walls of capillaries. Some amount of plasma, proteins and blood cells escape into intercellular spaces in the tissues to form the tissue fluid or lymph. It is similar to the plasma of blood but colorless and contains less protein. Lymph drains into lymphatic capillaries from the intercellular spaces which join to form large lymph vessels that finally open into larger veins. A lymph carries digested and absorbed fat from intestine and drains excess fluid from extracellular space back into the blood.